Bay aboard the battleship Missouri, the Japanese foreign minister put his signature to the paper ending the Second World War. This is Bob Trout in New York, switching you first to the USS Ancon. Standing by, standing by, RCA, standing by. This is Columbia's News Headquarters in New York, Bob Trout speaking. We were informed that the broadcast was about to begin. It is about to begin in a few seconds. We're going to switch you in a moment to the ship in Tokyo Harbor. We expect to hear first from Columbia's correspondent, Webley Edwards, who has been an eyewitness to the ceremony, the signing of the surrender aboard the battleship Missouri, a ceremony which took place under the eyes of the Supreme Allied Commander, General Douglas MacArthur. And now we hope to bring in Webley Edwards, so once again, we switch to Tokyo Bay. Attention, the peoples of the world. World War II is about to come to its official closing. We're on the Pacific Fleet flagship USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay for the signing of the surrender of Japan. Three years, eight months, and 25 days since the attack on Pearl Harbor. We're about 700 miles from now, but we've come much further than that by way of the Central Pacific, New Guinea, the Marianas, and the Philippines. The Japanese delegation has just arrived. Military men in formal military uniform and dignitaries, uh, civilian dignitaries in their formal attire. Lined up before us are more officers and men with uh, high-ranking uh, stars and gold braid and have been assembled in this bay for many a long time. The deck of the Missouri stretches out before us. We're on the veranda deck. Its great guns are pointed skyward to allow more room for the Army, Navy, Marines, and the representatives of the nations who are here. The United States, China, the United Kingdom, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, Australia, Canada, France, Netherlands, and New Zealand. An interesting note here for a moment. The Navy and Marine personnel, former prisoners of war who are here for this surrender ceremony, are Commander A. L. Mayer, who is a surviving officer of the USS Houston, a prisoner since May 6, 1942. Lieutenant J.W. Condit. He was a member of the Yorktown's Torpedo 5 Squadron, a prisoner since September 1943. Uh, First Lieutenant William F. Harris, a Marine from Corregidor, since August 4, 1943, in Japan. Machinists may threaten 12 L.T. Shaw of the Navy, a survivor of the USS Grenadier. Lieutenant General Jonathan Wainwright is here, he who surrendered at Corregidor and Badan, and General Arthur Percival, who surrendered at Singapore. With General Wainwright, all his staff, Brigadier General Lewis Beebe, his Chief of Staff, Colonel John... John Prager, one of his aides, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Dooley, and his orderly, Sergeant Hubert Carroll. Planes have been flying overhead. The day is quite uh, cloudy. A mist surrounding the mountains that come down to form the uh, Tokyo Bay. Before us here are flags. Oh, here comes, here comes the Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces, General of the Army, Douglas MacArthur. William Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz and other dignitaries. General MacArthur is now facing the microphones. He is about to start his speech, which explains the signing surrender in order, in order, in order. A solemn agreement whereby peace may be restored. The issues involving Divergent ideals and ideologies have been determined on the battlefields of the world, and hence are not for our discussion or debate. Nor is it for us here to meet, representing as we do a majority of the peoples of the earth in a spirit of distrust, malice, or hatred. But rather it is for us, both victors and vanquished, 
to rise to that higher dignity which alone befits the sacred purposes we are about to serve, committing all of our peoples unreservedly to faithful compliance with the undertakings they are here formally to assume. It is my earnest hope, and indeed the hope of all mankind, that from this solemn occasion, a better world shall emerge out of the blood and carnage of the past, a world founded upon faith and understanding, a world dedicated to the dignity of man and the fulfillment of his most cherished wish for freedom, tolerance, and justice. The terms and conditions upon which surrender of the Japanese Imperial Forces is here to be given and accepted are contained in the instrument of surrender now before you. As Supreme Commander for the Allied Powers, I announce it my firm purpose in the tradition of the countries I represent to proceed in the discharge of my responsibilities with justice and tolerance while taking all necessary dispositions to ensure that the terms of surrender are fully, promptly, and faithfully complied with. As the Emperor of Japan and the Japanese government and the Japanese Imperial General Headquarters to sign the instruments of surrender at the places indicated. Mr. Momo Sugimitsu, Foreign Minister of the Japanese government, is stepping forward now to set the tone of the global and sign the instruments of surrender. He has will be the first signature on behalf of the Emperor of Japan to surrender all Japanese army forces and permitting the Japanese people to obey all orders of Supreme Commander Mikata through the office of the Japanese Emperor.